Right now at noon, we're learning the man suspected of a hate crime in Milwaukee has a military background. And 20 years later, answers to a Racine County cold case. We'll hear from the sheriff. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mark Kane. Hope you're having a good Friday. Well, despite the weather, unseasonably cold out today, so stack on the layers. Let's head over to the Weather Center. Meteorologist Chris Reese has a look at your first alert forecast. Hey, Mark, and hey, guys at home. We've seen some sunshine earlier today, but... Now we're starting to see some cloud cover that's going to be sneaking in the picture from the west. And a lot of this will increase as we go through the afternoon, but I, I don't think it's going to be a huge deal for us. Temperature wise, we're finding the good news. We are nearly 20 degrees warmer than where we started earlier this morning. So it has warmed up, but still we're in the 20s. 28 in Janesville right now. Madison coming in at 24 degrees, but we do have those winds out of the south at nine miles per hour. So you factor in the wind chill and it does indeed feel like 14. Here's weather track though, no snow nor rain. So we are going to be dry as we go through the rest of this afternoon. Look for those temperatures topping out right around 29 degrees. So we are staying cold, but as we look ahead, one of the things that I do believe we will see is a warm up this weekend. It'll be brief before more near record cold comes our way to start next week. We'll be breaking that all down in just a few minutes. All right, we'll see you then. Thank you, Chris. New at noon, the man suspected of throwing acid on a Latino man in Milwaukee served in the military. The National Personnel Records Center confirmed Clifton Blackwell served in the Marines from 1975 to 1978. The 61-year-old is charged with first-degree reckless injury as a hate crime. A Wisconsin National Guard sergeant says he's been discharged in retaliation for complaining about sexual misconduct in his unit. Master Sergeant Jay Ellis's complaint last year has triggered two federal investigations. Ellis says he was notified he would receive a medical discharge. The Wisconsin Guard's top commander, Major General Donald Dunbar, has ordered an investigation into the alleged retaliation. The Racine County Sheriff has identified the woman found fatally beaten near a cornfield in 1999 as Peggy Lynn Johnson. After her mother died, Peggy, who was approximately 18 years old, cognitively impaired, on her own, went searching for help at a medical clinic in McHenry, Illinois. There, she met a registered nurse named Linda LaRoche, who recognized Peggy's disability and took her into her home. Peggy lived with LaRoche and McHenry for the last five years of her life. There, she suffered long-term and horrific abuse at the hand of Linda LaRoche. Johnson was 23 years old when she was murdered. She has been now been buried. She was buried as Jane Doe and now will be buried alongside her mother in Illinois under her true identity. Racine County investigators arrested Linda LaRoche in Cape Coral, Florida on Tuesday. The sheriff says she will soon be back in Racine to be held accountable. To Washington, the White House is calling for the identity of the whistleblower who triggered the impeachment inquiry to be revealed. The attorney for the whistleblower sent a cease and desist letter to the White House accusing President Trump of using rhetoric that could endanger their life and the lives of their family. Today, acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney did not show up for his dep deposition. Public hearings begin next week. Tomorrow marks the 30th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall, and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is in Germany commemorating the historic event. CBS's Gwen Baumgartner reports from London. The world watched as East Germans stormed the Berlin Wall 30 years ago. Residents were overwhelmed at the chance of a new life after the travel ban was lifted. Newspaper headlines read, the wall is gone, Berlin is Berlin again. He says, this is finally our hour of freedom. The wall was built in 1961 because too many people were fleeing Soviet-controlled East Berlin to escape to the West. Hundreds of East Germans were shot to death trying to find freedom. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo was stationed near Berlin as an army officer during the Cold War. This week he returned to commemorate the fall of the Iron Curtain. But as we celebrate, as we take this victory lap, we must also recognize that freedom's never guaranteed. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. 
Even after President Ronald Reagan's famous words, it took another two years for the wall to come down. Now 81 years old, Dagmar Simdorn says she'll never forget the moment she could finally cross the border. Tripped. She says it was something beautiful. The whole of the past came crashing down. Decades later, parts of the wall still stand as a memorial to symbolize the collapse of communist regimes across Europe. What was once a barrier to the outside world now welcomes millions of visitors to Berlin each year. Gwen Baumgartner, CBS News. And during his visit to Berlin, Secretary Pompeo unveiled a statue of former President Ronald Reagan. The city named Reagan an honorary citizen in 1992 for his efforts to reunite Germany. Well, General Motors has announced that it has sold its Lordstown, Ohio plant to electric truck startup Lordstown Motors Incorporated. The plant officially closed down last month when GM and the United Auto Workers Union reached a contract agreement after a protracted strike. The hope is that the sale of the plant will result in jobs coming back to the area. The mayor says the sale could result in roughly 400 jobs. Expect traffic shifts on Verona Road this weekend. Crews are putting the final touches on the expanded lanes between Raymond Road and County PD. There will be overhead signs to help drivers shift into the new lanes. Starting Sunday morning, three lanes will be open for southbound Verona Road traffic. By Monday morning, three northbound lanes will be open. Volunteers are working through the weekend trying to break the cycle of homelessness. More than a dozen Home Depot employees in Appleton are spending their free time improving living conditions for homeless veterans. They're renovating the COTS shelter that helps vets while they get back on their feet. Our veterans have given, I mean, some of the ultimate sacrifice, so it's important that we give back to them as, as a small token of appreciation at least. The campaign is spending about 100,000 hours on projects. The Home Depot Foundation plans to spend a total of $500 million nationwide on veterans projects by 2025. And there's more to come on News Street Now at Noon. I'm next, we'll see what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. What if I told you that we were making lasagna without using any of the typical ingredients? Well, we are, and boy, is it tasty.
You know, it's hard to think of lasagna without thinking about how all those layers of goodness create one incredible dish. Well, today, we're creating a to die for dessert, which uses the same layer after layer concept, and the results are nothing short of amazing. The first thing we do is mix some crushed chocolate sandwich cookies with butter and press them into the bottom of a baking dish. While that chills, we beat together some cream cheese with vanilla and powdered sugar until it's smooth. Then we fold in some whipped topping. This goes over the cookie crumb crust. See, it's sort of like building a lasagna. A layer of chocolate pudding goes over that and back into the fridge it goes. The whole thing gets finished with whipped topping and after it's chilled, we sprinkle each piece with some mini chocolate chips. All it takes is one forkful and you'll know why we fell in love with this. I mean, what's not to love about all the layers of goodness? The recipe for what we call our chocolate dessert lasagna is ready and waiting for you on our website. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a layer after layer way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Mm -hmm. I have all this. Mm. <laughs> all right, guys, thank you. Next at noon, get out your fuzzy socks, your extra sweaters. We're expecting possible record-breaking cold for the start of next week. Chris has the details in your first alert forecast next. Our call for action phone bank is open right now, ready to take on your consumer issues. You can call our hotline. Volunteers will help you with any consumer complaints. The number is 608-270-2833. The service is open every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday between 11 and 1. Well, Disney's new streaming service strikes a deal with Amazon, and a major airline is unveiling a Star Wars-themed plane. Mark Liverman has your Money Watch report. Mixed messages on a potential phase one trade agreement between the U.S. and China. White House trade advisor Peter Navarro denied reports the two nations have agreed to roll back tariffs as part of the first part of a trade deal, while Press Secretary Stephanie Grisham said in a Fox Business interview she imagined tariffs could be lifted if such an agreement is reached. 
Disney Plus has reached a deal with Amazon. The agreement allows the streaming service to be carried on Amazon's Fire TVs. Disney Plus will offer Disney, Fox, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, and National Geographic content. It launches next Tuesday. The cost, $7 a month. Airbus continues to extend a wide lead over Boeing when it comes to airplane orders. It had 415 airplane orders in October. Boeing reported a net total of 54 orders through the end of September. The company has been hit by the grounding of its 737 MAX jets after two deadly crashes. And United Airlines has unveiled a Star Wars-themed plane in anticipation of the final installment of the saga, The Rise of Skywalker. The 737 gives fans a chance to enjoy droid greetings and stormtrooper selfies. Customers can track the jet using the plane tracker FlightAware. May the force and flight be with you. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Mark Liverman. And at the noon hour, the Dow Industrials down 35 points. The Nasdaq, however, up 15. The S&P 500 up a fraction. Q106 Prime Director Pam Bianchi is out of the radio bar. Time now for the weather. Chris has a warmer forecast for tomorrow. Yeah, that's the silver lining. Things will be warmer as we head into your Saturday. Soak that up, folks, because there is more record cold to come as we go through this forecast. Right now, we're at 24 degrees. That's thanks to winds coming out of the south at 9 miles per hour. However, with the wind, there will be a wind chill. The wind chill 14 in Madison right now. 28 in Janesville. Our friends over in Lone Rock at 25. Bosca Bell at 27. Same for Prairie du Chien and Platteville. All of these temperatures are nearly 20 degrees warmer than where we started off this morning. So if you were outside this morning and you step outside now, it may feel warm to you. It's all relative. We did not set a new record low this morning, but we did end up one degree above our forecast of eight. We were at nine degrees this morning. Our forecast high is 29. The old record is 25, and we are knocking on the door of not being able to set that one. But in the meantime, high pressure does remain in control. That's what's allowed us to see that sunshine earlier on. But this warm front, well, stationary front, will become a warm front and head our direction as we go through the weekend. That does mean warmer temperatures for tomorrow but out ahead of that we begin to see that cloud cover on the increase we're tracking that in from the west right now we'll see those temperatures warm up towards about 29 here we are at 4 30 overnight tonight you'll start to see the influence of that warm front at nine o'clock temperatures will be right around 22. notice the winds coming out of the south at that point a strong southerly wind really helps to warm you up even at night. So now at three o'clock in the morning, we've gone from 22 to 28 degrees. And by the time we're waking up on Saturday morning, that south wind sticks around, but the temperature makes it into the low 30s at that point. Then we'll see the low 40s for those afternoon highs. But I do believe that cloud cover is going to be sticking around for us. I can't rule out an isolated flurry or shower tomorrow. You just saw that on future track, but it should not be widespread by any means. I think the cloud cover will be the bigger story as we go through the weekend, but the cold is going to be the story headed through tonight. So a lot of those schools still have playoffs when it comes to high school football. If you're going out tonight, you will want that coat. 
Wind chills will be right around 15 degrees. You'll start to see that increase in cloud cover. Temperature wise, we'll be hovering right around the low to mid 20s. Then tomorrow, it is girls on the run. That's going to be in Wanakee. Temperatures again will be in the 20s with wind chills around 10 to 15 degrees earlier in the morning. The faster you run, you'll stay warm. I think that's how that works. I myself am not a runner, but that is what I have heard. This cold air begins to retreat. This is what gives us the warmer air for Saturday. By the time we move towards Sunday afternoon and early next week, it is the core of the cold that really begins to pour down on the upper Midwest. This folks, this brand of air will likely be colder than what we've already seen so far. So I do believe that again, records will be in jeopardy. Our average high is 49 right now. 29 today. How about 20 by the time we get you towards Tuesday? I'm being generous, but I'll tell you what the models. Most of them do not get us out of the teens by the time we get you towards Tuesday. Cloud cover will be our friend on Monday to keep us just a couple degrees warmer. Maybe we'll see a chance of some flurries as well, but we do have alert days for Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday just because of how unseasonably cold this is and it's come so early in the season. A lot of folks probably aren't adequately prepared for it, so we want to make sure that they are aware of the cold that is to come and can take those actions in advance. Not bad for the Badger game tomorrow. Kickoffs at three. No, the Badger game is going to be fantastic yeah. tomorrow. I mean, you know, if you're relatively cold speaking, 40s, <laughs> yeah, right. it's going to feel like spring tomorrow yeah, compared to what we've seen. All right, Chris, thank you. Next at noon, Angie Horkin from the Beef Council makes pasta recipes that are perfect for your next dinner party or even for the kids. Stay with us. Angie Horkins here from the Wisconsin Beef Council with some pasta recipes to warm us up as the weather gets colder. How yeah, are you? I'm very good. I'm cold, but not, I don't know if I'm ready for harsh winters yeah, yet. <laughs> well, we got some good food for it. We do. Yeah, this is perfect for this time of year. So um, this, let's start with this recipe. It's a, a porcini 
mushroom and beef bolognese. So bolognese, that's so a really hearty, thick Italian meat sauce. So you start with two pounds of lean ground beef, some onion, um, some green pepper if you like, garlic, simmer that, and then you're gonna add a lot of great ingredients. So pancetta, so you can get a little package. Mm -hmm. This is four ounces, it calls for two ounces, so just chop that up, and then some prosciutto and red wine, and then you put that in and reduce it. So um, get all your ingredients in, put your wine in before the rest of your liquids, reduce it by half. So then the alcohol kicks, cooks off and what's left is just that good base of flavor. Reducing is just letting it cook. Yeah, let it cook, let it simmer. And then some tomato paste, some um, sun-dried tomatoes. Now these are not packed in oil. Um, they're the dry in the bag, so you just chop those up. And then the porcini mushrooms, they call for dried. And you can find those in the supermarkets mm -hmm. here. And then just chop them up, and then those rehydrate in all your liquids. Your beef, and you put beef broth in, and then some curcumini mushrooms, some fresh thyme. So a lot of really good ingredients going in. And then let it simmer 45 minutes. So this is going to make the house smell delicious. It does smell great. And it's going to warm up the kitchen. So any pasta you can put it over. Put it over pasta. Oops, I got some bow ties here, whatever you like. You could top them with some great Parmesan cheese, some more fresh thyme if you have it, or parsley. Definitely a pasta dish fancy enough, I think, for company mm -hmm. um, or for the in-laws, whatever you okay. like. And for the kids, um, we got another kids, one. And for the kids, <laughs> we got a quick 30-minute Tuesday night um, skillet meal, one-dish meal, chuck wagon beef pasta. So I just browned up a pound of ground beef with some onion and some green pepper. If the kids don't like that, you can skip it. But then used wagon wheel pasta, put them in dry with some beef broth, and then make kind of like a homemade barbecue sauce. Oh, don't cook the pasta like first. Joke. No, put it in dry, it'll cook right in the beef broth, and then a little ketchup, brown sugar, and apple cider vinegar, so it'll give it like that sloppy joe barbecue flavor, and then when it's done, you know, let it simmer 12, 13 minutes to get the pasta cooked, and then top it with some great cheddar cheese. All right, beeftips.com. Beeftips.com, click on As Seen on TV, right on the homepage, you'll get these pasta recipes, plus we've got a link to all of our, our pasta collection, okay. On Point Pasta. And we'll see you at 4 o'clock on Tuesday with more of them. Yes. All right, good deal. Have a good weekend. You too. Chris has one final check of the forecast. Yeah, some clouds are going to sneak in as we go through the rest of the afternoon. Temperatures, though, should top out right around 29 degrees, 41 on Saturday. That's the warmest day of the forecast, folks. The warmest day. By Tuesday, we will struggle to get out of the teens. We do have alert days to start the upcoming work week as each day will start out in the single digits for those afternoon highs. Bundle up, stay warm. Absolutely. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you back here at four. In the meantime, have a great afternoon.